Welcome to another episode of Pixel Feet Radio, and I'm here with my friend Joseph Wilkins. Joseph, how you doing today? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing all right. I guess the universe, it's against us. This is the second time we try this. <laughs> <laughs> Yesterday, we were in the middle, and the power just went out. And then today, the internet is not cooperating. But here we are. We're trying here. Uh, for those of you that don't know, uh, Joseph is the founder of FunnySellsVideos.com, where they do amazing uh, creatives for brands out there. Very funny videos, very professionally done. And uh, I'm super excited to have you here today. Thank um, you. Yeah, absolutely. Before we get into uh, FunnySellsVideos.com and what you guys do, why don't we go back a little bit? Um, so I like to ask people, how did, how did you guys get started? You know, obviously you had a camera on you at all times. Were you always an <laughs> entrepreneur? Take me back how everything started. Yeah, I was. In fact, when I was 10 years old, I had my own dog walking business in a little village in, in England. And I would hire all the other kids to go walk the, the neighbor's dogs and I would get a percentage. So I've always kind of been the guy that never wanted to work for the man. So uh, I guess that's that's the, the root of my entrepreneurial spirit. But uh -huh. how I got into doing what I do now, um, I went to college, studied graphic design, and I started my very first corporate job as a graphic designer. And in the marketing department, they wanted somebody that could do video. And so I kind of raised my hand and said, yeah, I'll, I'll go on some courses. And that was really the catalyst of a 20 year career that, uh, that, that I've been on. Um, so about 20 years ago, I quit my corporate job and started um, Procreative Studios, which was almost exclusively focused on producing television commercials and infomercials. You know, these long form 30 minute shows that, you know, people would watch at one, two in the morning. Mm -hmm. Our very first infomercial we did was the Little Giant Ladder infomercial. We were one of three production companies that produced that that did over $200 million in sales. I mean, that just that blew is amazing. my mind. <laughs> that yeah. is amazing. And I, and I basically did that for 15 years, you know, kind of upon the riding on the coattails of that success, you know, we'd go pitch other companies and we worked with some huge brands. We've worked for Google, LinkedIn, Chevrolet, Goldman Sachs, um, doing other, not just infomercials, but, you know, sales, kind of marketing videos but the problem is um i just don't watch tv anymore and I don't most think people any of them. <laughs> we don't live tv absolutely not it, Very is that rarely. still a thing <laughs> I, I guess if you're watching like sports events but i'm not yeah. a sports guy i mean i watch yeah. things here and there but yeah. i mean i guess that'll be the only time but those days of being up at 2 a.m. and watching, you know, the OxyClean commercial and you see Billy yep. Mays popping up on your TV is like, Billy Mays here. And it's just like, oh, my God, I love this dude. I mean, that was me at <laughs> least. I was like, this is why I love marketing. Yeah. Uh, why am I still watching this? They suck Yeah, in, it's right? like you're, you're glued to the TV for like 20, 30 minutes. And it's so funny. Like everybody, well, not everybody, but a lot of people know who Billy Mays is still to this yeah. day because – his infomercials back in the day, they were so powerful. Uh, right. And, you know, when he was super famous, uh, you know, we have internet and all that good stuff, but it wasn't as as big as it is now with social media. And it, this oh, is before yeah. Facebook and all that in my space. So it wasn't like now where you have, you know, a short attention span and you have a million videos coming your way right. that everything just kind of like – you have to stand out on the feeds exactly. of social media, which is like why you guys do such a great job. But the other thing that people don't think about, and this is uh, where Funny Sales Videos, uh, where you guys help, is that those infomercials, they're like big budget movies. I've been oh, part yeah. of those infomercials. I mean, you're talking about, you know, to do one of those shoots, you're talking about, you know, 50, 70, 100 and something grand just to shoot it. And you have oh, low whole, end, low yeah, end. We were, we were on two million dollar projects. I, yeah, see, I, I've never even seen that one that big. And I was one where the budget was, I think it was between 75 and 125. I can't remember the exact uh, yeah. number because they were going back and forth. But you walk in there and it was just like a movie. I mean, you had the, the, the camera crew, you had the director, producer, they had catering, the actors, the, I mean, the whole nine yards, man. Yeah. huge production a celebrity and, if you can afford it yeah absolutely and then uh you know they will 
film the infomercial and then they will run it, you know, in multiple channels on TV, on cable, uh, you know, when they knew it would hit depending on the demographic and they will squeeze as much as they could out of it for years sometimes. Yeah. So it was a good investment. But nowadays with social media and everything going on, I feel like we've seen it all our attention span. Uh, I, wouldn't well, yeah. say that our, I wouldn't say that our attention span sucks because it doesn't. It's just we're more uh, selective about what we watch. So if you don't hook somebody right away, you lost them because we know you we know, have I, another I, million I always, things. I look at Netflix, right? They're mm -hmm. still one of the most successful companies on the planet they're still pumping out you know two hour long movies and people are watching them so attention yeah. span isn't the problem mm -hmm. the problem is getting good creative and it's kind of interesting if you if you look at netflix now what they do is they try to hook you you know back to the infomercial days that was our goal was in the first 30 seconds hook your attention so that you won't change the channel um with netflix they do those pre-roll have you noticed when you're scrolling yes. through, it mm -hmm. kind of shows you the highlights of what you're about to see. They are yeah. trying to hook you. So if you do it right, you can still get someone's attention for a two hour span. Um, but, you know, kind of going back to when when we realized that TV wasn't working, you know, short form or long form, because there just wasn't the audience there. And our customers were saying, you know, how do we get back to getting those returns that we used to get? That's when we really started to look at what companies like the Harmon brothers and other bigger agencies out of New York and LA were doing with these really fun viral style videos that kind of felt like you were watching a Saturday night live sketch, but then all of a sudden you realize, oh, there's actually a product that's being sold here. But you didn't, you didn't feel like you were watching a commercial. You felt like, oh, I'm watching entertainment, which is really the reason why people are on those platforms in the first place. So that's when we really said, okay, how do we figure out how to do what, you know, those guys are doing so that we can give our clients the kinds of results that we used to get on infomercials. Yeah. And it's so funny that you bring the Harmon brothers up because, um, you know, for the, for those that of you that are listening or watching and you don't know who the Harmon brothers are, I mean, I want to say they're most famous. Where have you been? Yeah. You're the most famous, uh, uh, creative that they've done is squatty potty. You know, it's squatty, squatty potty, potty, purple mattress, poopery, chat books, fiber fix. Yep. Those yep. are the big, big ones. Yeah. And when I saw some of your videos, I mean, which they're amazing. It, it reminded me of the, the, the Harmon brothers. I call it the formula because I've been through the course too. So I'm like, oh my yeah. God, this is amazing because now it's accessible to so many people. Uh, you know, because if you want to work with the Harmon Brothers, let's face it, you got to be like Nike or something. <laughs> like, you know, you're not getting in there unless you're one of those huge brands. And now that you're, you, you, I mean, you grabbed the idea, the creative force behind it, and you guys are doing it so well, and you're making it more well, accessible you. for people out there. And I really love it. So well, I do have to give huge props to Harmon Brothers because when we launched funnysalesvideos.com, it was almost at the same time that they were launching their Harmon Brothers University, where they essentially train companies like mine and small business owners to replicate their success. And so a huge amount, in fact, I was on their podcast, Poop to Gold, a few months back, you know, kind of sh talking through my story of how we got the success that we did standing on the shoulders of the Harmon brothers. And let's be honest, a lot of those principles that the Harmon brothers taught were the same principles that we were using back in the infomercial days. The principles themselves aren't new. It's the way that you grab people's attention and, uh, and put it into a shorter form in an online friendly way that ultimately grabs people's attention, entertains them while telling a story of the solution that you're delivering in a way that's not icky um, and that ultimately, you know, it's not about laughs, it's about sales, ultimately turns cold traffic to sales. And what's so cool about it is that they they want to get it out there. They want people to learn. They're like they're proud of it. And it's because yeah. they know it's like it works. It's really fun. And you're it's not like you're you're copying or anything. Everybody's making their original ideas like you guys. You know, it's like movies, right? Everybody has a different <laughs> idea. But if you really sure. pay attention to movies, they all follow the same formula. You know, the character arc, there's a guy that's going to guide the the main character. Yep. They're going to encounter a problem. Then there's going to be a solution to it and redemption and all that. It's all you just don't think about it because, you know, this is not what you do for a living. But it's so cool that they're like, hey, guys, this is how we do it. 
we we think that the whole world should know how to do it. And then it makes people like you build this whole business with it and help other people and business owners to be successful, which is awesome. You want to hear something funny? For the first 15 years of my career, when the phone would ring and a client would say, hey, we just saw this really funny video online. We want to do something like that. Let's do it. I would say, sorry, we don't do funny. Because the worst <laughs> thing you can do is try to be funny yeah. when you're not, because right. you'll end up looking silly. Right. And so it's a it's a very fine line to say, are we ready to do something that's funny? And so that's why we spent about a year before we launched Funny Sales Videos gathering a network of, of comedy writers, really good professionals. You know, I, I sit at Thanksgiving dinner table and I can crack a joke and the family thinks that I'm the funny one of the family, but I'm really not qualified to write these scripts, which is why I don't. Right. I hire professionals who do this for a living. You know, some of my guys, they're all freelancers. None of them work full time for me. They all, uh, some of them work on cruise ships at nighttime and during the day they have free time. So they work for me. Some of them are traveling comedians doing stand up, and during the day they're going to their next gig or some of them are on Fiverr or Upwork or these other you know, freelance marketplace sites that anyone listening can do the same kind of thing. But it, it's, you know, it's a fine line between looking silly and being really funny and relevant. And that's, that's what you've got to try to do to connect with an audience. Yeah. I talk about it on the, on, on the channel all the time. And, and a lot of my videos and podcasts is that, that I know copywriting, I know how to write good copy. But I don't consider myself a full-time copywriter because I know there's people that that's all they do 24-7. I know yeah. how to do it, but that's not what I specialize on. And believe it or not, I, I mean, to people that are watching this, I don't write all my copy. I have people write copy for me because I know what I want and they know how to execute it even better than I can. So why not let the professionals handle it? Like you said, a comedian, I can crack a joke too, but I would I could never write comedy for right. a commercial or anything like that. A lot of people are surprised when they find out our average script, our average video, the script for that video went through 10 different writers. I always believe in the wisdom of the crowd. So if you, if you, you can hire, in fact, I have hired some recognizable comedians and just their work on their own wasn't good enough. You got to put it through the writer's room or the virtual writer's room. That's how they do Saturday Night Live. They don't just have one comedy writer. They have a room of 20 or so that mm -hmm. bounce ideas off each other. We do that virtually using shared documents. And, you know, the, the results, I'll, I'll just, your listeners are probably more interested in, you know, how is this going to help their businesses? But the results, I'll, I'll tell you, before we did this, you know, our, our biggest video online maybe had 100,000 views. The very first campaign that we launched after we went through this team building um, of, of the Funny Sales Videos brand, our very first campaign hit 7 million views and over a half a million in trackable subscription sales. Fast forward to today, five years later, our biggest campaign, it's for True Earth Laundry Detergent, has almost 100 million views between the different videos of the same campaign and, you know, millions of, do of dollars in revenue. I, I can't even, I, I can't even track it because Ryan <laughs> over at True Earth is doing so well. Um, he doesn't give me specific numbers, but I you mean, can infer from hundred million views. That's amazing. I mean, a hundred million views, that's no joke whatsoever. What's the name of the brand again? I'm going to have to it's, pull this video. It's out. True Earth Eco Strips. Fantastic True. company in Canada that has a mission-based uh, product to reduce uh, plastic in the landfill. So they created this dry laundry detergent. Uh, you'll have, you'll have to check out the videos. Yeah, I'm definitely going to check that out. Um, let's go. Let's go back a little bit. Um, so how how did the company get started? I mean, you were just doing the commercials. So the very right? first. The first company, Procreative Studios, I just started because I was working as a as a marketing director and I was doing TV and video for my clients and other people saw it and said, you know, hey, can you do some freelance work on the side for me? And eventually I had more freelance clients that I had time for and my wife said, pick a job. 
Yeah. And so that's when I just kind of jumped ship and prayed that everything would work out. And 20 years later, I'm still praying, but still afloat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but how did you decide to change the direction of the company to the formula was, that we're using today? It was simply driven by clients saying things aren't working like they used to. Okay. And and knowing that social media was the future. TV was a dinosaur. It was dying or it, in parts it was dead and I knew that we had to really leverage the power of social media and you can't transplant a commercial that's intended to run on TV over onto the internet and think you're going to get the same result. It doesn't it's work. A different, it doesn't it's work. a different mindset. It is. People want to be entertained. People want to have fun. People do want to like and comment and share, but you got to know how to craft the message that connects with them. Um, Absolutely. And that's, that, that's part of it is, you know, would you ever write a letter and then walk to the mailbox and decide who to address it to? No, you do it beforehand. <laughs> exactly. You've got to know who you're writing to. So a huge part of it is, you know, customer segmentation and figuring out, okay, for this video, who's the target audience? What are their problems? What do we want them to do? How can we put things in there that are shareable? And how can we create shocking opening grabbers? I mean, I just did a LinkedIn post, a vlog, where I went over three different opening hooks to the same video. One did a 1.9 ROAS return on ad spend. Mm -hmm. One did a 4.1 return on ad That's spend. That's amazing. Split the testing. only thing that was different was the opening 10 seconds. You guys should stop this podcast and go watch that vlog so that you can see the difference between those three things. And it sh that just demonstrates how important that opening five to 10 seconds is. Yeah, that's when you get to hook the audience. Now, let me ask you something. With this style of videos, have you dealt or seen any particular niche or industry where it won't work for because you can't it's hard to make it funny so it works so have you had that issue have you encountered that issue at, at all i i encounter that question every day from clients calling up saying i just don't know if my brand is funny mm -hmm. and my initial response is the duller your brand the duller your product the more successful you will be here's why number one i mean let's face it laundry detergent how funny is that not funny at all it's not funny at all but the way that i think about it and this is why i'm not a pro i'm just saying i'm just telling you what's in my head because i'm sure this is what goes to people's head it's like okay laundry detergent is something you can make funny on video uh because you can play around because it, it's a direct to consumer type of product so you can get creative with the type of uh you know whatever it is that you're doing but when i'm thinking of dull industries like something as dull as i don't know let me think of something uh, something that you can't demonstrate on video. Yeah. So, a, a SaaS um, software, let's say. Yeah, perfect. Let, let's go so, with that. So, I, I, again, I get this question all the time, and I say, the duller your industry, the better your success will be because none of your competitors will even dream about doing something as disruptive as what we're about to do for you. Because that's the name of the game is about standing out, being disruptive, being memorable in a positive way. You don't want to be disruptive and you know, sync your brand with a really scandalous video or something that's just not going to be politically correct. Um, I mean, there's a little bit of that in some of our videos, but not much. We want to be, um, you know, irreverent and we want to be disruptive and we want to be in your face, but we don't want to be doing anything that's going to be detrimental to the brand. But back to the, the SaaS software, you know, what other marketing CMO of a SaaS company is going to do something like this? And I always say these kinds of videos only work well if your end target is a human with emotions, right? which is everyone. everyone it doesn't yeah. matter if you're B2B, B2C, you know, what vertical, everyone at the end of the day is a human. So it's human to human marketing. And as long as you're relevant, so all of our, like you said earlier, you, you, you didn't say it, but you described Donald Miller's story brand framework of the guide and the hero and the problem, the solution, the quest, the journey, mm -hmm. the success at the end, you know. And so as long as you tell a story that depicts somebody that's relevant to your customer, 
that has the same kind of problem as your customer that shows the solution making their life better like your customer wants their life to be then everything else is just about making it relevant and so there you know we we have B2B, B2C, we just had a mortgage company that approached us. You know, how boring is a mortgage? Yet we turned it, we turned it into one of the funnest videos I think we have on our website. We, we rented a full-scale replica Back to the Future DeLorean, and we showed this lady. I mean, that was our opening hook, is a lady getting out of a DeLorean that had just, um, you know, exploded into the picture with fire and sparks, and she gets out and she says, I have to show you something. This will change your home renovation plans forever. You know, let me show you what your house could have been like if you didn't procrastinate renovating it. And the, this home loan will give you the ability to do that. That is so and, cool. And, you know, it has, I think, 3 million views. It's a very small budget. You know, these a lot of our clients are very small. Our goal was to kind of be, you know, the Harmon Brothers style video for companies that have a very small budget. Um, and, you know, their lead cost has just gone down and down and down and their generation numbers have gone up. So you can do it with anything. That's a long answer. but <laughs> So when you say, and you know, and I know it depends on what people want and all that stuff. But when you're talking about small budget, what kind of range are we talking about? Ballpark. Uh, every video is different. But I would say if you're spending, you know, low, low, low end, if you're spending 10 grand a month on digital ads. Mm -hmm. You, you should be doing something like this because what we do, I mean, that's so very accessible, which is great. Yeah. I mean, yeah. if you go on a website, you'll see case study after case study of people that doubled, tripled, quadrupled the, the returns that they were getting for the money that they were spending. So it, it won't, you know, it'll take a few months to pay back the cost of a video. Yeah. And I mean, they're amazing videos. Go to the site if you're watching this or listening to funnysalesvideos.com. Uh, the other thing that I noticed that you, you actually have, you also have a, a, a free ebook that goes through the eight simple uh, steps yeah. to make it. So why don't we go into that a little bit? Why don't you explain what that, what that is so people can go ahead and take a so look. So we're a very small company, intentionally so. Um, and so we, a lot of the times we'll have companies that call us up that either we're just too busy because we only take on a couple projects, new projects a month. Um, and so we wanted something to give these people and say, you know, we can't help you, but you can do it on your own or you can go hire people to do each step of this. But it, we, it, it's called how to make a funny sales video without hiring us. Eight steps anyone can follow. So, you know, the, the, the steps are number one. I've already talked about it. Know your customer. Identify what are, what are the pain points that you're trying to solve. Um, do a ton of research on what your customers are already saying about your product or your co competitor's product. I won't go into a lot of detail because people can download this and read through the ebook themselves. Step two is brainstorm and as many different concepts as you can come up with. If you think you have a good idea for a video, you don't. You only have a good idea for a video once you've gone through at least 20, 30, 40 other ideas to prove why your first idea was the best. I like because that. I'll I guarantee like that. you, I'll guarantee you the first idea is never the best. I love and that. And so going through a brainstorming process, ideally with multiple people that can kind of, you know, smell your stuff and tell you if it's good or not. Um, and so, you know, our average video will go through dozens of concepts before we finalize on three, four, five that we'll present to the client and, you know, obviously give them our opinion. But but uh, ultimately, you've got to decide on what's what's the concept of your video. And really, the concept is, you know, who is our main character? What's the problem that they have? And how does what our clients sell solve that problem? So that's step two. Step three is the scripting. And we go through two main phases of scripting. There's the marketing scripting. So coming up with the, the key selling points that we want to communicate maybe coming up with some objections that we need to overcome, whether that's price or availability or whatever it is, um, because the customer is never going to buy if there's a concern that's unresolved. So if it's something that, you know, reading through your customer comments, you get something that says, you know, it's too expensive, it's too expensive, it's too expensive, then there's a pattern that you've got to address. Um, then taking that marketing framework, and this is where multiple writers come in, and taking that and giving it to a really good storyteller, you know, a creative writer that can make a story out of those copy points. Now, it's still not funny, 
until you get to step number four, and that's adding the comedy. That's the fun part, right? right? And that's where we will typically hire at least five different, very experienced, very skilled comedy writers. And, and the way we do it is we use um, Dropbox, a shared paper where everyone can see everyone's comments. And it's just like a writer's room. You know, throw out all of your jokes, throw out your witty lines, tell us what you think sucks, tell us what you think needs to be improved. And between the seven, eight, nine, ten of us total writers on, on the project, you know, I typically play the role of being the curator, right? Getting everyone's feedback and deciding what actually makes it onto the final draft. But just like, you know, who wants to be a millionaire, the best lifeline is always ask the audience. So the more people that you can get to contribute, but then also to test these jokes on, a joke is only a good joke if your audience thinks it's funny, not if you think it's funny. So right. you, you got to make sure you're talking in the language of the people that are listening. So if I was to make a video for my grandma, it'd be hugely different than my 13 year old tween. So you've got to make sure that it's connecting. That's where testing comes yeah, in. I mean, that makes a lot of sense because like, you know, there's stuff that I find hilarious now that I didn't when I was a kid and, you know, stuff when I was a kid, I thought it was hilarious. And I look back, I'm like, I thought that was funny. Like, yeah. really? <laughs> you know, it's so it's very important to know your audience. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, for me, having teenagers is a really good thing because they remind me daily of how out of touch I am <laughs> with reality <laughs> of that. I mean, seriously, if you spend time around teenagers, you'll realize they, they speak a completely different language. Oh, yeah. Listen, I I have to I go on TikTok every day to keep up with just yeah. everything social media because I got to see where the trends are going and all that. Exactly. And man, I've learned like a whole new language that, you know. We used to use like slang back in the day, as I like to say, you know, they don't say that anymore, back in the day, uh, you know, no cap, trill, Gucci, <laughs> like I already know it all. I'm like, and I don't even have teenagers. Mine, mine are babies right now. So it's going to be yeah. interesting oh, when coming. they hit that age and I'll be like, okay, guys, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> yep. So, so gonna... go ahead. So, so step five, you've, you've now finally got your script. It's done. And I can't stress this enough. Don't move on until your script is done. Now, there's a difference between being perfect and being done, but it has to be at least done. And what I mean by that is if you don't take it to complete strangers and have them sit down and read it and you're visually watching them to see, are they smiling? Are they laughing? I mean, that's that's the ultimate compliment. But, you know, just from a script, are they getting the message? Is it connecting with them? Don't waste your money on production with a script that's half-baked because a good team of producers still can't, you know, you can't put lipstick on a pig and make it into a supermodel. That's, that's you, you've, got, you've got to do your job right in the writing. But once you've, you've decided it's never going to be perfect and you can't get caught up in analysis paralysis because you're losing money or opportunity, um, if you do. So there's a fine line, but make sure your script is ready. Then you'd think as a 20 year veteran of a, owning a television production company that I would say the most important step of producing a video is getting the best cameras and the lighting and the sound just right. And those things are important, but they are nowhere near as important as picking the right actor or actors. Mm -hmm. That is the most important part, second to getting a good script, is casting the right actors. And a lot of people don't realize that auditioning actors is absolutely free. It doesn't cost you a penny. In fact, literally just this morning, I was sorting through auditions that had been mailed, e emailed to me. Um, COVID did a really interesting thing. It made everyone set up a home studio like you and I uh, are using right now. Right. So everyone especially actors have a home studio, whether it's their closet or a, you know, a nice studio where they will do an audition for your script for free. That all you so have cool. to do is, yeah. All you have to do is go reach out to your local acting agencies and say, you know, here are the parameters that I think this role needs to be, you know, 18 to 35. They need to, you know, 
have these kinds of characteristics and they'll send you people that have done auditions reading your script. And, and here's a cheat. A lot of the time I'll get ideas from actors that I never use, but they interpret the script in such a way that I'm like, oh, they said that a different way than I had it scripted and it sounded better and I'll change my script. Um, so that may, maybe that's cheating, but I do that quite a lot. <laughs> I don't blame you though. I mean, that's how you get good ideas. But that's ultimately cool. you, you got to pick one person. And right. so what I'll do is I won't rely, and this is another thing that you know I think is valuable. I won't rely on their audition because you and I feel very comfortable when we're at home and we have that record button that we can delete it and do it again and do it again and do it again. But right now we're live. Right. So we're kind of, we're more on our game and you've got to test actors when they're live. So if I can't physically bring them into our studios, which I do quite a lot, I'll at least want to do a live Zoom audition with them. And I'll say, you know, can you do this faster? Can you do it slower? Can you put emphasis on this word? Can you, you know, tell the joke, but do the timing a little bit different. And what I'm doing is I'm making sure that they're coachable. And making sure that, sure that on the day when we're spending a lot of money on sets and locations and the crew and other things, that I'm not going to be spending too much time getting the right kind of performance out of them because it's already in there. And so I'm looking for certain qualities to make sure that the actor is going to deliver what I need on the day of the shoot. That's one of those things that most people won't even think about. You know, it's like, oh, yes. man, I can waste time like trying to coach this actor and, you know, right. save a lot of time by taking my time doing it live with them. And it's great. Yes. But even more important, what I'm also looking for is I'm looking to see, can they improvise? What do they bring into the script that I didn't write? What are they going to be able to give me on the day that will be better than what I wrote? See, filmmaking should be a collaborative process where you know the sum of the parts is greater because other people contribute stuff that just makes the whole thing better in a lot of the videos that you probably watched some of my favorite lines were never scripted they just came up with them off the top of their head so i'll what i'll do is i'll make sure i get the lines as scripted and then i'll leave room in the schedule and say play with that scene what would you say, you know, or I may just, you know, when the cam, when they think the camera's not rolling, they, they say something, but you'll, you'll sometimes, you know, lightning will strike and you'll get even better stuff because you've got the right people in front of the camera. So anyway, step five is production. And then obviously I've already, already said this. If, if you have a really good film crew, they will make the images look so much more appealing that people will stop scrolling. Right. That's ultimately the goal, right, of your video is to get people to stop scrolling. And if you're using an iPhone and are just using regular lighting that everyone else is using, your video is going to look exactly the same as everyone else that's going past that timeline. So the more, you know, the, the more money you can spend on really good production, the more it's going to stick out and be disruptive. So I like to call it pattern interrupts right in the first three seconds, whether yes. it's like a filter or something, just just something that, that stops pattern them. that stops somebody from scrolling. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. No, that that's great. And again, if you want, if you want to really see some, some examples of this, go to LinkedIn and I, I have a three minute video where I show three different opening hooks, different pattern interrupts. And I show how one did a 1.9 row as one did a 2.7 and one did a 4.1. And actually the entire company sold out of inventory in two weeks because of that one video. That's amazing. The and I'm going to have the link. I'm going to have the link for your LinkedIn in the description. Uh, awesome. For the podcast Great. Video so they can find Okay. It. So step six, I'll, I'll, I'll quickly get through the rest. Step six is editing. You've heard it before. Comedy is about timing. I can say the same joke. One is really slow. The other is really fast. And depending on the joke, one will work and one won't. And on set, if, if something isn't quite working, a really good editor can edit in the right place to turn something that's kind of funny into something that's really funny. So knowing how to speed things up or slow things down is the job of a really good editor. The other thing is we talked about how, you know, people don't stop watching videos because they're too long. Netflix is still proving that. They start watching videos because they're bored. Correct. And so a good editor knows where are people going to get bored? If you watch our videos, they're 
almost, not quite, but almost overwhelming. They, the pace never stops. Once you start watching it, I never give you the invitation to stop. I used to, when I was editing infomercials, I'm looking around here for a remote control. I used to sit <laughs> in my edit bay and I used to think about the person sitting on their couch with a remote control just beside them. At any point, if I make an edit that's going to get boring or something's too slow, they're just going to pick up that remote and they're going to change the channel. So I still have that, you know, metaphor in my mind that don't allow your people to get bored. Let them, let them bounce for other reasons. Boredom shouldn't be one of them. Um, and again, a good editor will do that. Now, we once we get a video, we edit, depending on which package our clients pick, most of our clients will pick the package where we deliver 36 different versions of the same video. 36? Yeah. 36. Wow. Th that's standard. Let me really quickly run through the math because, because again, this is something that regardless of whether you're doing this kind of video or, you know, a straight corporate video, you, you should be using these kinds of techniques. So what we'll do is it's the same video. We'll do a long version that's typically around three and a half minutes ish. Then we'll do a shorter version that's less than two minutes. We used to make that a rule because uh, Instagram wouldn't allow ads longer than two minutes. I think they've changed that just recently. But we still like to do a full length version and then about a half length version for our clients to A-B split test. Then what we do is we do three different opening hooks of those two different videos. So now we're up to, I'm not a math guy, now we're up to six videos. Then what we do is we do three different offers in that video. So now we're up to 18 videos. Yeah. Then we will do a widescreen version for YouTube and desktop. And then we'll do a square version for mobile because we know that 80% or a lot of people are going to watch these on their mobile devices. And on our mobile version, we will make sure that our graphic designers create the, the subtitles because 80% of people don't have the sound on. Correct. So our goal in the opening five to 10 seconds is to visually hook you and then get them to look at the text so that they start to get drawn into the story with the goal that they'll turn on their sound. So that's why we have 36 different versions so that when, when our digital marketing partners deploy these campaigns, they're not guessing. They have data that will tell them and, and, and Facebook, you know way more about this than I do, but Facebook will do those rotations and tell you which of the performing three hooks works best, which of the different Absolutely. opening or, or offers works best. Does the long version work best or the short version? Um, we actually have found that our longer versions outperform our shorter versions in almost every campaign that we've run. It's crazy. Yeah. And then uh, same with, with um, copywriting on your ads. The yes. longer the copy, at 80% of the time it wins. It's crazy. I'm like, people read it. If you, it's just like the, It's just like what you're doing. If you hook them and you keep yep. them going, you know, with the same type of writing, it, it they'll read the whole thing. People will read the whole thing if they're interested in it. If if you have good creative, they'll keep watching, whether Absolutely. you're reading, whether you're listening, whether you're watching. Okay, so that, that step seven is be ready so that you can do, give your marketing agency all of the tools that they need to really test this. And then step eight is kind of where a lot of people say, oh man, and that's forget going organically viral. Oh yeah. Just because you build a video that's really funny, maybe that means that your mom and a few other people will watch it, but it's not going to get shared like it used to. There's way too much content online. And more importantly, these algorithms of these social media platforms, they can spot the difference between a cat video or a celebrity video and an ad that's designed to get money. And they will not allow your video to go viral unless you're paying to play. And so I always tell people what we do is we create vending machines full of $100 bills that cost $20 to use. How many times <laughs> how many it. times are you going to want to use that $20 bill if you're going to get that $100 back? All day long. If you give me a dollar, I give you four back. Are you going to say right. no? Of course not. <laughs> that's that's how you have to think. Yeah. But but our videos convert that row as, you know, like I said, the 1.9 to the 4.1, that's, that's what it's all about. 
And well, you don't want you don't want a campaign that's based on hope. You know, hopefully this will go viral. How well? How will you repeat that if it does? You can't build a business model on that. But if you have predictable returns, that's when your business really can take off because you can predict and you can you know count on it. And listen, no, but no one can predict every single time if a video, quote unquote, is going to go viral. No. And like Joseph is saying here, the formula that they use, that you guys use, it's predictable because it works and it's been proven time over and over and over again. And if you notice what's very, what he's saying is they follow a formula. You trying to create a quote unquote viral video, you're not following a formula. You're just shooting something and hoping you throw it out there and it takes off all of a sudden. And it's like he said, unless, you know, Facebook and Instagram and TikTok and Snapchat, they'll be like, okay, let's see how this does. Oh, I got engagement. Let's bump it up a notch. Okay, I got engagement. Let's bump it up another notch. But guess what? If I come back with the same video and I add, you know, fuel to the fire, as I like to say, with my paid ads, guess what's going to happen? Good vibe viral video because they're paying. So now this, this is the one that's going to skyrocket. I don't care if it's the exact same video, obviously. So, you know, 100%. the predictable formula you guys have, that's why you guys are so successful at it, you know? Now, we do get some virality. Don't mistake what I'm saying here. But yeah. it's like a snowball. You have to start rolling down the hill with paid ads. Once you get it out there, I mean, our, our biggest single video has 50 million views and 50,000 shares and, that's crazy. you know, and a whole ton of sales that came virally organically but it's still only probably you know maybe five to ten percent of those views are organic yeah but that, i mean that's still a huge amount that's still of, a lot yeah 50 million views i'll take five percent of that for free <laughs> i'll take it all day long are you kidding me all right so joseph well, where are you guys going from here so you, obviously you guys are growing you keep growing what is the dream here? Do you want to have like a massive, massive studio one day? No. Or do you like to keep it where you're at? No. I, I mean, unlike some other agencies, my goal is, is to make better quality content than more of it. So yeah. I've, you know, I'm maybe that's not very American of me. Well, I guess I'm not an American, but I, I'm not <laughs> interested in some huge corporation. I love what I do. Um, and I just want to keep getting better at it. That's that's my goal is to get better results, better creative, you know, get better people on my team. Um, but I don't, you know, I turn away more business than I take because I want to, you know, I never want to water down that soup. Yeah. And that's a smart thing to do, man. It's like, I, you know, people ask me all the time because I do the same thing with clients when it comes to like running their ads and stuff like that. It's like, listen, I, I, my dream is not to have, you know, Vayner media like that's not me at all like i don't want that like i'm yeah. happy where i'm at i like working with a handful of clients have other projects where those are the ones that i really want to grow and it's what makes me happy it's what makes you happy at the end of the day right absolutely and it's better for everyone because then you do quality work for those clients and you know it comes across that way if you grow out of proportion it's a lot harder to do that but listen joseph thank you so much for coming on today man and for having yeah. the patience of dealing with like technical difficulties yesterday <laughs> and today uh, i'm so glad i had you on uh people that are watching or listening make sure to go to funny download the ebook with the eight steps eight the simple steps so you can create your own video if you want to go that route if you don't think you're ready yet to bring on you know joseph and his team to do it and uh if you have the resources and you're at that level where you can do it, go for it, man. Because when you go on the site and you see all the videos, it's they do amazing work. They really do. And then uh, also check out um, uh, Joseph's LinkedIn. Uh, all the links will be down in the description. Is uh, anywhere else where, where people can find you, Joseph? Uh, two, just two other things. I have a weekly pod. Well, it's probably not weekly, but I have a podcast called How to Make a Video Go Viral. Okay. Um, we talk about everything that we've talked about today in a lot more detail. And then we interview people that have gone through this process, whether it's with us or with other companies. Um, and then, uh, you know, I always like to offer a free consultation to anyone that wants to shoot me an email to talk about their business. You can shoot me an email at joseph at funny sales videos.com. All right. And then check it out the podcast and uh, Joseph, thank you so much for being on again. I'll have all the links in the description and uh, until next time. Thank you so much. It's been fun.